On this episode of The Common Constitutionalist, one brave movie producer takes on Hollywood's liberal Jewish elite over the Iran deal. LeBron James donates millions to allow poor kids in Ohio to attend college and why college is so expensive these days. And Eric Erickson at Red State gets vile, vile hate mail over his Red State gathering and the flap between Donald Trump and Megyn Kelly today on The Common Constitutionalist. You're listening to The Common Constitutionalist, broadcasting from an undisclosed location, free from the prying eyes of establishment black helicopters. Welcome back to the Common Constitutionalist podcast. This is the Common Constitutionalist coming at you. And we were going to get right into this thing. You probably don't know, well, I certainly didn't know this guy because I don't follow Hollywood. But at any rate, the guy's name is Gerald Mullen. He's a famous movie producer. Um, He's an Oscar-winning producer, producer of Schindler's List, Rain Man, Twister, Jurassic Park. Not the game Twister. The, uh, the, the movie Twister. Yeah, I produced a Twister. It was really good. I did the, uh, I produced the spinny thing. That was, uh, made me famous. But no, this guy was a uh, major Hollywood movie producer and one brave individual, if I may say myself. And the reason why I may say myself that he is indeed brave because he is taking on 98 prominent Jewish Hollywood leaders, whatever, Hacks, liberals, however you want to classify them. People like Norman Lear, who is a, he's, well, let's just say it, he's a commie. And uh, Mike Metavoy, they uh, came out and they published an open letter in support of Obama's Iran deal. Ninety-eight of these prominent Jewish Hollywood hacks came out and supported Obama's Iran deal. And that is a tragedy, but... It is what it is, I guess. There's nothing we can do about it. But this guy, Gerald Mullen, decided to um, to take some action against this thing. In Mullen's email, he alleges the deal proposed will allow Iran to arm its military in five years, purchase ballistic missiles in eight years, and restart its nuclear program in 15 years. He writes this will more than likely push the inevitable nuclear crises out of many of the signers' lifetimes and onto the backs of their grandchildren or great-grandchildren. I beg to differ. No, it won't, because it won't take that long. Everybody who thinks... Let me rephrase that. Nobody in their right mind thinks that Iran is going to stick to this deal. They're not going to follow the timeline. It's not going to take five years to purchase ballistic missiles. They're going to do it almost immediately. Russia or China will break the agreement, and there's not a darn thing that we're going to be able to say about it. We won't say anything about it, um, just because Obama and Kerry want this deal so bad that it won't make any difference what these guys do, and everybody with anybody with half a brain knows this. It's not going to take them 15 years to restart their nuclear program. It's Frankly, it's, it's never stopped. It's already started, however you want to classify it. So I, although I agree with Mullen's premise, I don't agree with his timeline by any stretch of the imagination. He goes on and writes, How much of their newfound largesse, that uh, $150 billion that we're freeing up the, their money, How much of their newfound largesse will be used to kill innocents, he asks. How much of it will be spent on child-sized bomb-laden vests for the indoctrinated young to climb on a bus, enter a marketplace or a theater, and go boom? A question mark. Israel must be very wary, and each of the signers must surely know that, shouldn't they? Well, whether they do or don't, it kind of makes no difference. I don't think they do, frankly. These liberal elites, they think they're the smart. Every one of these guys thinks they're the smartest guy in the room, when not a single one is, except for maybe Putin's Russia and the Chinese leaders or something like that. And certainly the Iranians are just sitting back and laughing at this whole charade, and that's exactly what it is. It's a charade. 
And kudos for this Mullen guy to speak up, because this is a travesty. But these, uh, these 98 liberal Hollywood Jews authored an open letter in support of the deal, and they uh, published it this past Thursday as a full-page ad in Los Angeles uh, edition of the Jewish Journal. Didn't know there was one. Uh, must not have lost, my copy must have been lost in the mail. But they, uh, they claim that far, for far too long, Iran was actively developing and expanding its nuclear infrastructure. Okay, you're absolutely right on that. Closing the gap to a nuclear weapon, that is absolutely correct too. They go on and say that this agreement, negotiated by the United States, no begged for by the United States, China, France, Germany, Great Britain, and Russia, halts, yeah, and rolls back this dangerous march through verifiable and measured steps. You'll have to pardon my laughter because this is a dang joke. They can't. They cannot actually believe this stuff. But they do. They believe it. And that's the scary part. Verifiable and measured steps. We all know how long it's going to take to verify anything. And by the time we get around to going through all the UN procedures and all the other nonsense we have to go through just to take a look at anything, uh, they would have cleaned it up and, heck, sent it to the moon by then. They would have had the time to build a moon rocket and <laughs> launch all their nuclear stuff to the moon and then bring it back when we're gone. Uh, that's how much time they get uh, before, they have to, that, before they have to relinquish their uh, facilities for inspection. Mullen ends his emails to the 98 supporters with, It is our president who defies the reality of Islamic terrorists and their ongoing promise to destroy Israel. While the letter's signers stand with him, comma, I will stand for liberty and freedom and Israel. Bully for him, man, because I'll tell you, I guarantee you this guy's a, got a black ball on, painted on his back now. I hope he was headed for retirement. Um, has get a nice golden watch and is sent off to uh, to uh, you know Miami or Fort Lauderdale or St. Petersburg or wherever wherever these Hollywood guys retire to Palm Springs or something. I don't know because I I can't believe that this guy that that anyone in Hollywood is going to want to get uh, going to collaborate with this guy, get in bed with this guy, metaphorically, of course. Of course, I've never seen him. Maybe he's a looker. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But this all goes back to the question of why do these Jewish Hollywood producers, directors, whoever these guys are, the Norman Lear types, why do they continue to baffle us with their support of anti-Israel, anti-Jewish um, proposals or mandates or whatever? Um, and the reason goes back to what we conservatives have said for eons, it seems, or at least modern-day conservatives have been saying for a long time now, a liberal is a liberal first and foremost. It doesn't matter whether he's Jewish. Heck, it doesn't even matter whether he went through the Holocaust or not. If he's become a liberal, he is a liberal first, then a Hollywood producer. He's a liberal first, then an auto mechanic, or a surgeon, or a car salesman, or uh, an engineer, or whoever, uh, the Hollywood producer, director, actor, it doesn't matter. If you're a liberal, you're a liberal first, foremost, and only. And after that, you can be whatever else you want to be. But the thinking is, the decision-making is, always on the liberal side, even to the detriment of yourself or your own people. It doesn't make any difference. And that that's what's so baffling about the left, is that they'll go against their own interest because it's a liberal standing or policy or whatever it is. And it's just it's, it's disheartening is what it is. And I hope this guy weathers the storm and uh, comes out, well, he's going to come out looking golden, and these other guys are going to come out looking like the buffoons that they are, not that anybody's going to report on it or anything, but um, bully for this guy for doing what he's doing. At least he's making an effort. You're listening to the Common Cause of the Common Cause. Let the truth be known.
Okay, so LeBron James is giving back to the community of Akron. Um, he's pledged $87 million for a program to let his let hometown kids in Akron attend college for free. Now, James is a big Obama guy. He's a big Democrat. He supports Obamacare and all that other socialist nonsense. But bully for him, man. Um, if he's given, I don't, see the problem is is that this article doesn't say whether this is his 87 million or some of his money and some other program, government programs money. So let's just go on to the assumption that this 87 million is LeBron's money over a period of time. But he's partnered with the University of Akron to provide a guaranteed four-year scholarship uh, for students who go through the Akron public school um, system. They have to graduate high school. The scholarship will it'll cover tuition and the university's general service fees, which we'll get to later. And the current cost is about $9,500 a year, which is, for college, relatively inexpensive. That's for sure. They're, uh, they're still finalizing the details, the criteria of, of the scholarship program, but basically the students have to graduate within a, a Akron's public school system. They have to achieve a certain score, minimum score of standardized testing requirements, and they have to fulfill some sort of community service obligation. I don't know whether that's cleaning up a park or um, you know driving a crackhead to the local welfare office. I don't know what it is. I'm I don't mean to make fun of it because if he's if this is legit, if he's doing this. Uh, with his own money, then that's the way this should be done. That's called real charity, okay? And so, good on him if that's if this is report is accurate the way it's portrayed. The uh, the article says that it's the latest example of James, who often refers to himself as just a kid from Akron, giving back to a community that helped raise him. Helped raise him? I thought his parents were supposed to raise him. But oh yeah, that's right. It takes a village. I forgot. James says that it's the reason I do what I do. I, what, I play basketball, this is the reason? Okay, fine. If he wants to do that, good on him. Uh, these students have big dreams, and I'm happy to do everything I can to help them get there. They're going to have to earn it, but I'm excited to see what these kids can accomplish knowing that college is in their futures. Like I said, liberal, conservative, I don't care. If this is a accurate portrayal of what is actually happening, James is going to be using his own money, partnership, par- partnering with a local university. This is the way charity is supposed to work. He says it means so much because as a kid growing up in the inner city and a lot of African American kids, you don't really think past high school. You don't really know your future. You're here high school all the time, and you graduate high school, and then you never think past that because it's either not possible or your family's not financially stable to even be able to support a kid going to college. Okay, I get that. And again, if this is how it's portrayed, then this guy should be commended for doing a real charity work, and I think that's terrific. Now, college. Um... Not everything. Not everyone's cut out for college. College can be a good thing. If you're going into medicine or engineering or something like that, absolutely college is 100% necessary. you got to be there. you got to be at the brick-and-mortar college, so to speak. But a lot of these programs that they, uh, that they have now, most of the college programs can be done online for a heck of a lot less, more, uh, less expensive than going to a, an actual university. But that's not the way it works nowadays. Um, college is supposed to uh, college. We've been conditioned. Kids these days have been conditioned to you have to attend college to 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 do anything in life. That's the what you have to do. Um, and it's expensive because of that. Because people have condition been conditioned to know that that's the kids they have to go to college. Parents say you have to send your kids to college no matter what they want to do. Uh, no matter if they, they don't even know what they want to do yet or they don't have a clue or whatever, they have to just attend college for the sake of attending college. That's fine for a lot of people, not so much for some. But as far as the cost is concerned, it's gotten 
insanely ridiculous. Here's an example. In 1970, some of us can remember 1970, the cost to attend Harvard University, Harvard University, was $2,400. That's not per credit. That was $2,400 per year. 2400 bucks a year. You can't even buy a good used car for that now. Heck, you can't even buy a bad used car for that now. Now, if you were to do some simple math and extrapolate that out to present day, under normal inflationary terms, today's tuition at Harvard should cost about sixteen grand a year. That's one six, sixteen thousand dollars per year. But it isn't sixteen grand as anybody who's attended Harvard or anybody that knows about Harvard or Yale or Dartmouth or any of those other Ivy League schools know that Harvard is a minimum of about forty five grand a year. That's just for basic tuition now. You don't include the extra fees, the room, the board, everything what they call general service fees. It's for all the bull crap that you don't necessarily... It's kind of like cable. When you buy a cable package, you get a 1,000 channels, 990 of them you don't even want. Okay, maybe 980 you don't want, but you have to pay for them because that's the cable package. There's no such thing. There should be, but because of regulation and uh, Washington... There's no such thing as a la carte cable, just like there's no such thing as a la carte college or university. You can't just pay for what you want to pay for. you got to pay for all this other crap all that you don't want and uh, don't, don't, don't think is right or whatever. doesn't matter. That's the general service fee. But a lot of these experts have been polled or asked or whatever of their opinion of why college is so expensive, and some of them say that the principal drivers are um, the physical aspect, aspects or assets of the college themselves. Dormitories that have private bathrooms. They look like hotels. They look like luxury hotels. Dining facilities that rate like uh, three-star restaurants or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, classroom buildings, palatial mansions that you, you go to some of these college and it's it's unbelievable what they've spent on infrastructure and it's because they can. There's also been an explosion of support staff, administrators, um, social people, wh whatever it happens to be, uh, extra facilities. Faci manage, they have to manage these facilities. There has to be administrators. There's like an, one administrator for every dang gum student in the school. But that's And they're all overhead. They don't do anything. They don't teach anything. They're just overhead. Then there's the cost of remedial education. Once these dopey teenagers get to college, the colleges find out they don't know blank from Shinola, and so they have to go back and reteach them the English language and that two, to 2 plus 2 actually equals 4. It doesn't equal 5 because you feel like it does. Actually, maybe in some universities it still does, but at any rate, um, the remedial education, they say... That in say for example in Texas alone, conservative estimates is that they spend almost 250 million dollars every year just on remedial um, education, just to get these college kids up to college level before they you know, as they're in college, not even before they get there. Now I'm curious, and I haven't I I don't find anything on the interweb that tells me this. But I'm curious, as in, say, Texas, for example, um, supposed to be a big conservative state, and for the most part, it kind of is, I guess, but it doesn't say, say how many that 40% of the college students that aren't prepared. wonder how many of those kids are legally in this country. Um, do they have to teach them remedial English just to get into college? I don't know. So there are all these things that drive up the cost of college, but in my opinion... The number one reason why college is so expensive is because they can make it expensive and it doesn't make any difference. Colleges are, I guess, monopolistic. Sure, they have to, um, once, you, once you maintain it or get a reputation, you have to maintain it as an elite school. But once you become an elite school, you can practically charge anything you like. 
and all the kids want to get into the a you know Harvard or Yale or Princeton or Columbia or whatever it is, and they it's it's the um, people always blame blame big banking or big oil or big pharma or big this and that. No one ever says word one about big education, and they drive up the cost. Everything gets more expensive in education every year. Um, our budgets are stretched. Uh, nobody can afford anything but education costs, college costs, tuition costs go up virtually every year because they can, and that's why. That, and you have basically a single-payer system where you have to go to the government to get loans, and unfortunately, kids, again, are conditioned to, they have to get into the best school, so in order to get into the best school, you got to pay eighty to $100,000 a year for school. Then you come out, and uh, if you don't get a prestigious job right away, you, you have to move home because you can't afford to live because you're so far, far in debt, and the government owns your debt, so you can't refinance the debt or do anything with it because the government owns it. It's, it's such a sham, and that's, it's, it's a crying shame. But I'm glad LeBron is doing stuff like this, if it is what it is. And uh, I think we need more wealthy people to do that for these inner-city kids because it's their only way out. You're listening to the Common Constitution. Let the truth be known. All right. Eric Erickson's red state gathering that happened a few weeks ago. Uh, all the Republican candidates were invited. Then there was this big flap over between Trump and Megyn Kelly of Fox News um, about setup questions, gotcha questions, and all that stuff. And I agree. Megyn Kelly was out of line. I could tell by her facial expressions, her general demeanor, that these were gotcha questions. She was out to get Trump. Either she was told to get him, or she just doesn't like him, or whatever. But um, she was out to get him. That's my opinion. Just my opinion. So, at any rate, um, Eric Erickson at Red State decided to disinvite Donald Trump because of what he said about Megyn Kelly, or what everybody says he said about Megyn Kelly. I'm not going to rehash that nonsense again. And um, so he disinvites Trump and invites Megyn Kelly in his place, and um, all heck breaks loose, so to speak, on his comment page, his email page, his even his voicemail, frankly, apparently lit up, blew up because of this. And um, he wrote a post the other day and verbatim put some of these uh, emails up, these comments up, and they are graphic, and they are disgusting, and whoever these people are, I'm sorry, but you people aren't real conservatives. You're a bunch of freaking dirtbags. I didn't agree with what Erickson did. It's his right to do it. It's his event. He can do anything he likes. I don't have to agree with it, but and I can even boycott it if I want. I don't even have to watch it. I don't have to attend it, whatever, and that's my right as an American, as far as I know, still, certainly is my right to uh, to boycott a conservative venue. That, sir, that will always be my right. But at any rate, here's, here's, a, here's just a few of these choice, eloquently put words that they put down. Uh, and you guys, if you guys know anybody or a few of the people who did, anybody that did this, um, shame on you, frankly. Uh, I, I could go a whole lot further than that. Um, and frankly, if I met you in person, I would go a whole lot further than that because you guys are the scums of the earth. Here's one. Hey, Eric, go F yourself. They actually spelled it out. Um, yourself, you dip blank, not seeing it and then embracing it, moron, bathe in the truth. I mean, really? Wow. That, this, this guy's a real wordsmith, isn't he? What a jerkwad. Here's another beaut. Trump is the man, F, and every time I use these abbreviations or blanks, you can fill in the blanks, so to speak. Trump is the man, exclamation point. F, Eric Erickson, spells Eric Erickson wrong, genius, you freaking moron. 
hope he and all the women in his life are are you you ready for this raped beaten and murdered by illegal spicks go trump you what a jackwad i I mean honestly just yeah yeah i'm sure trump's proud to have you as a constituent yay for you and here's another one what a shill you are just ordinary effing moron i don't even like trump but you are the worst kind of hypocrite. I have never emailed a site like this. Yeah, sure you haven't. But you are what is wrong with the thinking or lack thereof in the media. I will curse your site. <laughs> what are you going to give it, the evil eye or something? Uh, and your name, every chance I have. Sell out MFR. Oh yeah, there you go, right. It's, 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 these are the people that support Trump. If you're a Trump guy, I'd rethink your position because these are the types of morons that support Obama and the Democrats. They're not supposed to support, um, rabidly support Republicans. It's all fine and good to support people. I'll grant you that. But, and, and I, I don't, I don't agree with Erickson, with what Erickson did either. I think it was ridiculous. Um, it was petty. Uh, Trump should have been invited. He could have uh, stated his case again or not, whatever. Um, But again, this is Erickson's event. He can do with it what he likes. I don't have to agree. No one asked for my permission, whatever. Um, But these people, and 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 there's pages and pages of this crap, and it's all the same, and it's all nothing but curses, swears, and poor language, uh, bad prose, put together wrong, spelling incorrect it's just it's so bad it's so vile and it's so evil um y'all whoever is doing this whoever's writing these things if they're honest trump supporters whatever whatever i don't want to have anything to do with you nor does any other true conservative christian want to have anything to do with you people you are vile and you're nasty and just Go go over to the Democrat side because that's where you belong. That's about all I've got today. I really don't want to get heated up over this thing. Um, it ticks me off that people who claim to support Republicans, whatever, um, can be this vile. Maybe it is a ruse. Maybe it's Democrats in disguise because it sure sounds like what they would put or what they would write. All right. At any rate, that's all I got. I don't want to get wound up, like I said. Y'all have a great day. I certainly intend to, and we'll talk to you next time.